These aren't ISIL positions, according to the US-led coalition. They belong to the al-Qaeda-affiliated al-Nusra Front and Ahrar al-Sham, two powerful groups fighting in Syria. The coalition says it targeted them with airstrikes in Aleppo and in Idlib province in the northwest of the country. It's only the second time that groups other than ISIL have been hit by the coalition. Al-Nusra Front has been making headway in Idlib in the past week, pushing out a U.S.-supported rebel group from their stronghold in the province. If this situation is not brought under control, Jabhat al-Nusra potentially could end up um, controlling at least one, if not both, of the last two border crossings open to the moderate opposition into Turkey, through which they receive the flow of recruits, trainees, weapons, ammunition, humanitarian, international humanitarian assistance. Everything that the liberated areas rely on now that, that is based in Turkey works through these two border crossings. Further south, an important fight for the control of gas fields is underway in eastern Homs. ISIL managed to take over a couple, then the Syrian regime took parts back again, but they are by no means secure. And even though ISIL wouldn't be able to produce from them, it's having a major impact. What it's doing at the moment is probably in the way of denial of these facilities and resources to the regime. That's significant because the gas fields were still in use. The gas plants, not all of them, but some of them, were still producing gas and ultimately power for the regime. And therefore losing this um, is putting a real dent in the ability of the regime to maintain electricity supply. ISIL recently uploaded these pictures from the area. Power supply has been a problem throughout this conflict, but it's now getting worse. As winter approaches, both the regime and the opposition areas, the so-called moderate opposition, are going to face a real shortage of fuel, which means a shortage of electricity, which means a shortage of heating, of uh, you know, energy for hospitals and clinics, operating rooms, for everything you can think of. And, and that is likely to have a really negative impact on people's lives. It's clear that whatever side you are on in this seemingly never-ending conflict, there is no winner. Just a country and a people ultimately being destroyed. Stephanie Decker, Al Jazeera, Beirut.